Hello guys, and it's Botson back with Botson Racing and what a day it has been today. Some class day and some class races and some big nice winners definitely to go along with it. Can't uh, say that we've been unlucky today. I think all of our horses have given a good enough effort. No fallers again, which is a good thing. Bit annoyed at Langer Dan winning again. How many times am I going to kick myself for not backing Cheltenham reappearances like the like of Night Salute and Langer Dan? Um, so that might have more of a, an effect of my tips up today just because I've got to feel like I've got to tip up these horses again just because they ran well previously at Cheltenham. But yeah, what a great day today. Mac Totti winning nicely at 8-1. to one. Some nice winnings, winners at like 11-1 to one with Hacker de Plas in the end. And yeah, Janina Bello was very, very impressive as well. Bit of a surprising race between Braceman Game and La Home Press with the Hoy Senor winning that race. I think there's got to be something to do with the ground there. There must be a reason why the Braceman was never there and La Home Press never could get anywhere near Hoy Senor. Must be ground preference and yeah, a bit disappointed with that race. Thank God we went low on that. Uh, again, Mullins, not Mullins, the John Bond race. Again, very, very close. Luckily, John Bond prevailed. Um, but yeah. Can't really complain. An excellent day to the first two, first day of two days I'm at uh, Aintree. So yeah, can't um, complain. So let's get right into the races. I'm going to keep this video a little bit brief just because I've got things to do, unfortunately. So d don't, um, sorry if it's a bit short than usual. Um, so I'm trying to get these um, horses out quicker than usual anyway. So moving on to the first race of Saturday Grand National. We've got three horses I'm tipping up today. I've got to tip up party business after getting hampered um, at, in Cheltenham uh, when we've tipped him up at 40s last time out. It's been an absolutely hacked in. I was going to try and tip this thing up at 17 to 2. I tried to get on early. I got it at 8 on my phone. It's all the way into 5 to 1. I'm going to have to suggest this as a, you know, just a win only selection. Um, I would love to tip this each way, but again, it's just been hammered in. And I'm going to try and get this video out as quick as possible so you can guys get the value. So party business, obviously ran a blinder after getting hampered last time out. I think this horse would definitely go well. Ian Williams is firing. And again, I think the party business didn't get, um, you know, hampered. It sort of had to weave its way through the sort of gaps between the horses as well. I think it was a peach of a ride and stayed on very, very nicely. Definitely his trip all over this. Um, yeah, party business is definitely one of my favourites um, to start off the Saturday. Another one to look at is Dan's Levent uh, with Avian Williams. Again, horse that was a bit disappointing over at Cheltenham last time out. I think this horse has definitely got potential to win at uh, 11 to 1. Um, 30 lengths behind Commander of Fleet in the Coral Cup. Uh, definitely got room to improvement. Stepping up in trip to 2 miles, uh, two, uh, 24 furlongs, I should say, not, not to 2 miles, 4, 3 miles. And again, this horse getting his preferred trip on good ground is what he wants. Good ground is what he wants. He's going to get it. And again, seven places with Sky at 11 to 1. I think we're having a small poke on this one. Another horse in this one is Sent Duro. I think is that how you pronounce it. Brom Brom Bromley is on board, claiming seven. Off a mark of 140, so off a mark of 133. Again, definitely a nice mark. Two previous runs at Kelso are definitely very nice. The one that caught my eye is the last time out with Cormier. Finishing second, a length and a half. Again, that was over two miles. Big step up into trip to three miles. Will he stay the trip? Who knows? Form between Belfast Banter last time at Cheltenham and then went on to run pretty well over the next time out over at Kelso after a long break. So definitely think this has got a chance um, with the trip. So we'll have to see. Cormier didn't definitely finished nicely over in Cheltenham as well to boost the form as well. So that's the first race. St. Doro is 18 to 1 in that race. Eight, uh, seven places, not eight places in that race. And on to the second race we go. Um, and this race, um, this is the Mersey Novices Hurdle. I'll um, be we'll back in just a straight win on this race. It's between two, in my opinion, walking on air and three-stripe life. Walking on air, I definitely see the appeal for. Definitely very, very impressive last time out, winning by 13-odd lengths. Obviously, you've got the Nick here and Nico de Bourneville combo. Very, very potent recently, and the, the seven barrows have been in flying form recently. However, I will have to side with three-stripe life with that form behind Sir Gerard. I think that is perfect form. Coming over here in two mile four, he's going to get his trip. I think two mile four was definitely his trip for three stripe life. Obviously, he run on two miles before. He's come behind Sir Gerard before, so I definitely think this has got a great chance. Um, yeah, Gordon Elliott's been screaming for a couple of winners recently. He hasn't got them. And I think this is one of his main chances to get one, for sure, if he doesn't get one. Um, 
during the festival. So yeah, I think Gordon Elliott um, and Davy Russell with this these two pairings, you know what they're like. They're always going to run pretty well. Um, and three stripe life definitely eleven to four is value. Has got a great great chance, and that piece of form behind Sir Gerard, I think, is impeccable. The fact you can get eleven for to four with this is crazy. So yeah, moving to the next race in the three o'clock. This is the mild May, I should say, and again another evens or odds on horse here. I don't want to tip this up horse. Um, I feel like if you're gonna back this race, I'd have this in an echo with Three Stripe Life. That's the double. Edward Stone and Three Stripe Life, that's the selection. This just wins, absolutely bolted up in the, in the Arkle. I cannot see anything come at Cummings near this. Maybe third time lucky, could bounce back to form. There's obviously a flicker of um, form between the two horses. Third time's lucky's also beaten the horse at once. He's also then lost again quite comfortably by Edward Stone, so obviously it's going to be a bit of a matchup between the two. Um, Maybe on a day I'll have a small poke on third time lucky, but again I think I'm more confident on Edward Stone. That's the that's the main banker I think of everybody's um, festival, definitely. Um, but yeah, Edward Stone's going to be a lovely little poke on this one with three stripe life. Uh, definitely expect these two to win. Massive chance. Don't see anything coming near it. Only third time lucky. Would have to rule out the Mullins horse um, and the JP horse. Yes, it's beaten a good couple of horses very 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 easily. But this is a massive step up into grade one company. I don't think it will. Um, I think it will be outclassed. So moving on to the feature race. Well, I should say feature race. This is the grade one. This pretty much the stay is all over again. Over in uh, Aintree, this is the Liverpool hurdle. Two horses here that are taking a keen eye to me is Time Hill. Uh, Florian Porter obviously won pretty nicely at Cheltenham. But I think that will be a different um, tactics on this horse. Obviously, you know, Dally Mullins is going to go very ahead on this horse. You know he's going to go forward. He's going to sort of take that lead and set the pace. Maybe there's going to be an angle swing. Maybe there's going to be a change in pace. Maybe something will, maybe like Molly's Ollie Wishes will go out there and try and contest the pace. Maybe Saad de Burley again could go out there and try and test the pace. Um, but that also could set up the race for someone like Time Hill or Champ, for instance. Um, as the pace collapses, it sort of leads it into Time Hill. So yeah, Time Hill definitely at 5-2 to two is my selection in this race. The one at each way I do like is Thomas Darby. A uh, bit of a disappointing run last time out for Ollie Murphy. Aidan, Cobden, Aidan Col Coleman is on board, I should say. Can't remember what it's out. But yeah, again, ran the heavy ground. Didn't like it at all. He's going to get good ground and ran pretty well on good ground last time. Um, eight lengths behind Champ. I think he can perform a better race last time. Again, that penultimate run was a bit of a disappointing run. Uh, Connections definitely said it wasn't the best run they've seen for Thomas Darby and I think if he's anywhere near that new, uh, Newbury race, I mean winning by two lengths behind uh, in front of on the blind side, I think that's perfect form and if he's again uh, running near that sort of good form on good grounds, he could have a great chance again if the pace collapses. Florian Potter is obviously a credible horse that has done many good things winning two stain hurdles back to back. Um, again, you've got to ask, is entry going to be perfect for him? Probably not. Time Hill, I'd be all over that one. Um, the main main danger, and again, Thomas Darby, could, it could set up for Thomas Darby as well, you know, with Ollie Murphy. So yeah, that's one to definitely watch out for. Um, I expect this horse to come in, currently 16 to 1. You can get four places with Sky. Um, yeah, Thomas Darby, nice horse. So moving on to the 4.15, and if it loads... And this is the Betway Handicap Chase. Two horses here definitely like. It's got to be all over Sham Blue. Um, Dan Skelton's definitely got his horses ready. Um, definitely targeting this Aintree meet for sure. And this is where the English come through. You've seen Langadan already win. You've seen some more um, English horses definitely win through as well. And Sham Blue is well handicapped here. Uh, last time out running over um, behind Delaho in the Ryanair. Definitely wasn't his trip. Heavy ground. Not what Chamblou wanted. He's going over three miles, which is his trip. He's going to get good round, which is his trip. The only issue is um, getting that, that stamina. Obviously, that penultimate run was a bit scary. The fact that he fell last um, at the last hurdle, he was going to win by you know twenty odd lengths, thirty odd lengths. Um, but that obviously that stamina, he, he sort of ran out that stamina at the end, and 
that what that's what cost him and that's what made him jump pretty weary and you need to have that stamina to jump over those hurdles over a, a fences over at Aintree as we've seen many times so yeah that's the that's the main worry if he's got the stamina he's not been shaken up by Harry Cobden two out I think this has got to win um 11 to the four currently um yeah this should just 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 win right a mark of 148 this horse is definitely a mark of, of a mark of 160 if if not more it's a grade one horse all over and it's in a grade three so yeah definitely think this is a, a great chance other one i like is killer cane i was trying to look for a value angle into this race um there wasn't many that was screaming at to me so i first looked at seen not heard uh definitely thought that horse was well handicapped and it is again though finished fourth behind Killer Kane last time out and then I'd looked at Killer Kane and I thought well this horse has definitely got a chance as well um, again off a mark of 131 comfortably beat seen not heard obviously um, for the Tizard Yard is a definitely a big thing as well they definitely have their horses definitely in form they target these races they have a, an idea where they want to go Killer Kane could run a big race here off a mark of 131 again well handicapped like Sham Blue um those two previous races last time out and the penultimate run were extreme form and i think this horse definitely has got a chance form wise and going wise i'm not too worried about anything uh, really um seven year old yes it's a bit of a worry but again i'm not too I'm not too worried again because we're off a good mark um but yeah six places on offer here so 10 to 1 i can either see killer Kane or Chamblou winning this um, so I'll have to tip these two up for sure. And yeah, those are the two I'll be going with. So moving on to the main race of the day, it is the Grand National. And we've currently got Enjoy Delen um, at 14s with um, with whoever you've backed it with. Um, so obviously can't tip that up. Um, I've been a bit lucky with Chatham Street Lad who got pulled out and plenty of attack. Bit bit disappointed and really annoyed at that. I just really thought Chatham Street Lad had a really good chance in this Grand National really really disappointed that he didn't run here so i've got to tip some other horses just to try and get a winner obviously this is a 40 odd field so we can't just have it all on one horse so i'm going to tip up three other horses in this race um two that i think i've got a great chance and then one at a big odds that i've got I think i've got a chance of placing so delta work obviously that you've got to back delta work here at 10 to 1 it's been a bit, a bit of a drifter because there's been money for a lot of times which i can't see winning Delta work at 10 to 1 has got a great, great, great chance in this Grand National, um, considering obviously the, the amount of runners in here. I mean, finishing first, but you know, in front of Tiger Roll on his preferred trip is pretty impressive, even if Tiger Roll was 12, you know, hats off to Delta work, very, very impressive. Um, again, uh, that piece of form, I feel like you just have to back Delta work in that, uh, in that just piece of form there. Jack Kennedy on board. He's been pretty poor recently, but hopefully he can get this one over the edge. He knows Delta Work very, very well. And yeah, expect a big ride from Delta Work. Eclair Surf, definitely like this horse. There's a bit of form again between uh, Eclair Surf and Win My Wings, who really, really won impressively over at Air and Scottish Grand National. Um, yeah, are running off of um, 11 stone 11. So obviously he had 11 pounds to give to Win My Wings and only finished a length and a half behind Wing My Wings, who won again very, very impressively at air. So was giving the winner 11 pounds coming over to the Grand National. Obviously the Scottish Grand National is a lot weaker race than the actual Grand National Aintree. However, that piece of form is very, very important because obviously what Wing My Wings did in the National over in air is very, very nice, very, very impressive. So you've got to give some credit to a Claire serve last time out. Um, so that piece of form, again, is something you've got to just have to back. Last time out, um, I don't know, the penultimate run, I should say, uh, won a grade three by 13 lengths over two mile, uh, three mile, three. You can't really complain that, can you? Um, winning by 13 lengths, very, very impressive. Tom uh, Bellamy's always been on the boss's horse. He knows what he's doing and he could get a fine tune at this horse. So 12 to one on this one, a Claire serve. And one of the really, really big prices is Topville Ben. Do you suggest about this horse? Probably a couple of minutes before the off, I expect this horse to drift. Uh, currently 66 to 1. Um, this is just more of a punt, this one. Um, again, it seems to, run, seems to run on heavy and soft ground, which is a bit of a disappointment. But the run behind good, um, good boy Bobby 
uh, Weatherby was very, very eye-catching. I think there was a hint that this horse could be aggressive. Um, again, ran over Heavy. I don't think Heavy is, is, is going, really. I think he prefers good ground, and he's going to get good ground. Um, I said a hint of progression. He's a 10-year-old, and off a of mark of 148. Definitely that run previously. He's been bumped up eight pounds for that previous run. Um, beaten by 13 lengths by Holstone. So that's definitely a reason why the handicap has put him up eight pounds for that run. And again, at a, a big price, I think this could actually come in the top seven, top eight or wherever what your bookies are offering. So top bill then, um, I think it's got a great chance of placing. Moving on to the last race of the day, unfortunately. It's been a blind of a weekend. Um, and hopefully we can end the festival with a winner. Obviously, yesterday... Um, we had the Mullins horse in the bumper, and that won pretty race, really nicely. Ashro Diamond winning at five to one and got absolutely hammered in. This one, I don't know what I like about Raf Gore Boy. Um, there's been talks in the paddock and the yard that this horse is very, very weird at home and seems to, you know, love it when it goes racing. Not much to know what this horse is actually capable of. Uh, very, very impressive point to point form. However, you just don't know what this horse is going to be like, so I couldn't have the Mullins horse this, this time out. I'd be all over the Alan King horse here, Ernest Gray. And currently at 9-2, to two, I think that's the value angle play in this race. I only have one bet on this race, and it's this horse beating um, everyone's game by 13 lengths. Again, very, very nice piece of form on good to soft. He's going to get good ground here. And yeah, I think this is that's a lovely piece of form. So I'm going to round up the video there. I know it's a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a 10 minute video, but I keep waffling. But yeah, that, thank you guys for tuning in. I um, appreciate all the feedback and all the content. Uh, I know again, we had a really poor day yesterday, breaking even. And today's been a, very be a lot better. Uh, so I'm hoping so we get a big, big winner tomorrow. I'm hoping that um, it's, I mean, it's going to be a lot harder to get winners. I'm not expecting to have a, a bigger day than today has been. But I would love to see some couple of big winners. I mean, even some big places like Topville Boy, I'm really keen on as well. So looking forward to it. I can't be disheartened if we don't really get more winners than I thought we would. But again, that's racing for you. Stuff happens and you just got to move on. So yeah, I'm just going to round up the video, guys. Thank you for watching again. Like, comment, and subscribe, and tell you tell me who you want. If any selections, I'd love to hear it, and any feedback would mean a great deal to me. So see you guys later, and thank you for watching, and hopefully we'll back some winners tomorrow. Let's go. See you guys.